system now. You are not your past. You're you. You're you right now. You might have done some things you wish you hadn't done. Don't dwell on that. You learn from it, that's fine, but don't dwell on it. Just keep moving. Keep moving. You know, use it. Use it as fuel. Say, never again. I get what I did wrong, but don't think that you're that person that made those mistakes. You're the person who's learned. I think that endurance, enduring something, and building up that ability to endure things, that's also a very important mechanism that you could apply to everyday life. Like that, the mechanism of understanding how to endure. Because a lot of people are just running from discomfort. They're running from it. They're just avoiding it. It's so easy to. And like if you get distracted for a second, you're like, mm, yeah, mm, let me check my phone. You just start going through your phone and looking at bullshit. And you're just distracting yourself from the tiniest frustration of boredom. Just the yeah. little, the, we don't get bored anymore. Or if we get bored, we get bored for these tiny amounts of time, then you get distracted. So your distraction is eliminating your boredom. But the problem with that is like, there's certain thoughts that only come to you when you're thinking, when you're, you don't have any input coming in. When we're constantly looking at our phones, the only input you're getting is input from other people. And sometimes that's good. Sometimes you get good stuff out of that. But it's like a diet of only fruit you know like hey mother yeah. you need some protein yeah <laughs> like this is you need you need to get some other things in your diet you know and um i think having discomfort in your diet like having it as a, a regular part of your life it minimizes the amount of uh, other kinds of bullshit and i think that insanity and and greatness are next door neighbors and they borrow each other's sugar there's there's something about mastery like true mastery uh that requires you to shut off massive areas of your life personal areas um relationships uh education my education was a joke i mean until i was 21 years old until i started doing stand-up comedy i didn't read books i mean i may, might have read a stephen king book here and there for to kill time while i was on the train on my way to training uh but there was no, uh, there's no desire to educate myself. If I was educating myself, it was maybe reading uh, the Book of Five Rings to mm -hmm. learn better strategy to be a better fighter. That was all it was. Or was there ever a point where you said, "I'm a little out of balance. I need to go the other way"? Well, I realized I was a flawed person for sure. You know, and I think in realizing that you're a flawed person, what it, helped you realize that? Just fucking up, <laughs> just being an idiot. You know, realizing you know girls would get mad at me, or maybe guys would get mad at me. Whatever it was, I realized that I had flaws. You know, uh -huh. I, I knew I knew that uh, I was, and then also failing at comedy. One of the um, hardest things to do is to go from being really great at something to sucking at something, and that's something that you suck at is now your path. You know, and that's what I found myself in comedy. You know, I, I could get laughs every now and then, but I knew I wasn't anything special. I knew I was terrible. And there was something exciting about being terrible because it, I had potential, because there was potential for growth. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a, if, you, if you start doing it and you're great at it, like, naturally, like, maybe I wouldn't have had the motivation to do it as a living for 25 years like sure. I've done. I don't know. But at that time, you know, making that transition from martial arts competition to uh, being a comedian, that's when I started going down the road of balance and started trying to balance myself as a person. And I started trying to uh, almost educate myself to have more things to talk about on stage. And then along the way, my curiosity started to blossom. And then I started to just be interested in things for being interested in them. And as I got better as a comedian, I became less worried about what other people thought about me and more worried about just improving and, and keeping, you know, keeping this sort of momentum going. And as I relaxed more, you know, in having some success in life and sort of uh, not.